Welcome to a lesson on how to solve a recurrence relation using a generating function. We can use a generating function to solve recurrence relations. In a previous example, we found a generating function for the recursively defined sequence below, where the sequence was 1, 3, 7, 15, 31, 63, and so on, which had the recurrence relation a sub n equals 3 times a sub n minus 1 minus 2 times a sub n minus 2, where a sub 0 is equal to 1 and a sub 1 is equal to 3. And we found the generating function to be a equals one divided by the quantity one minus three x plus two x squared, which we didn't show at the time, but notice how the denominator does factor. One minus three x plus two x squared, we have a factor of one minus x and a factor of one minus two x. So the question is, how does knowing the generating function help us solve the recurrence relation? If we could perform partial fraction decomposition on the generating function, we may be able to find a close formula for a sub n which is the solution to the recurrence relation. Partial fraction decomposition tells us that we can write the fraction of one divided by the product of one minus x and one minus two x as a sum of two fractions where we have a divided by the factor of one minus x plus b divided by the factor of one minus two x, where a and b are constants. So if we can find a and b, we can find the partial fraction decomposition. To find a and b, we have the two decomposed fractions using a common denominator, which is the product of one minus x and one minus two x. This gives us the fraction on the left is equal to a times the quantity one minus two x plus b times the quantity one minus x, all divided by the product of one minus x and one minus two x. In this form, notice the denominators are the same, and if the fractions are equal, we now know the numerators must be the same which gives us the equation one equals a times the quantity one minus two x plus b times the quantity one minus x. We will use this equation to solve for a and b. Now the equation above must be true for all values of x, but if we select convenient values of x, it'll make it much easier to solve for a and b. For example, if we let x equal one, notice one minus one is equal to zero, and this part of the equation falls out. So if we let x equal one, the equation simplifies to one equals a times the quantity one minus two times one, or just one equals negative a, giving us a equals negative one. Next, notice that one minus two x is equal to zero when x equals one half. So now we'll let x equal one half, which will allow us to solve for b. If x is one half, we have one equals a times zero, which is zero, and then plus b times one minus one half, which gives us b times one half, or b divided by two, giving us the equation one equals b divided by two. Multiplying both sides of the equation by two, we have b equals two. This tells us we can decompose the fraction like shown below. Remember, a was a numerator of the first fraction, and b was a numerator of the second fraction. We have the generating function is equal to negative one divided by the quantity one minus x plus two divided by the quantity one minus two x. And we should recognize these generating functions. Negative one divided by the quantity one minus x is a generating function for a sequence of negative ones. And two divided by the quantity one minus two x is just two times the generating function shown below here of one divided by the quantity one minus two x. If we multiply this generating function by two, we get two times the sequence one, two, four, eight, and so on which gives us the sequence two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, dot, dot, dot. From here, if we're gonna determine closed formulas for these two sequences, we can just sum the two closed formulas to find the closed formula for the original sequence of one, three, seven, fifteen, and so on. The closed formula for the sequence of negative ones is just a sub n equals negative one. And the closed formula for two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, and so on, you notice these are all powers of two, we have a sub n equals two raised to the power of n plus one. Remember the first term is always a sub zero. And therefore the close formula for the sequence we want, which again is a sequence one, three, seven, fifteen, and so on, is the sum of these two closed formulas, giving us a solution of a sub n equals two raised to the power of n plus one minus one. So this closed formula is the solution to the recurrence relation for the given sequence. I hope you found this helpful.